Hello my lovelies, it's Azana, and today I want to show you how to solve this problem that was part of a math test in 9th grade. In the historical arithmetic book by Leonardo of Pisa, the following transformation appears, which looks like this, show how Leonardo of Pisa must have carried out the calculation. Leonardo of Pisa, by the way, is also called Fibonacci, so the famous mathematician. And we have to show how to get from this expression here to this expression. So my plan would be to just take the left side of this equation here, start with this expression, transform it step by step, and then hopefully to end up with this expression here from the right side. So let's take this expression here. We start with this, but we always keep in mind where we want to go so that we can always compare if we come closer to this or not. Um, so if we compare these two expressions, here we have one big fraction, here we don't have fractions at all. We have two separate parts that are connected by this minus. And here in the numerator, we also have two separate parts that are connected by this minus. So maybe this would be a good first step. Instead of writing this as one big fraction, we can write this, because of this minus here, as two separate fractions that are connected by this minus. Then we're going to have two separate parts, like we have here, that are connected by this minus. Okay, how do we do this? Well, the denominator stays the same, so we have the square root of 8 here and the square root of 8 here as well. And in the numerator, in our first, we take the first part of this difference, the 20, then we have our minus. And for the second numerator, we take the second part of this difference, the square root of 96. Okay, so now we have two separate parts, but if we compare this, here we still have fractions, here we don't have fractions. So how can we get rid of these fractions now? Here we have a number divided by a square root, and here we have a square root divided by a square root. So this fraction here is easier, so maybe let's start with this, because instead of the two separate square roots, we can write this as one big square root, and then write the fraction inside. So we have the 96 over 8 in our square root and can calculate this then. Can we do the same with the first fraction? Well, I would need a square root in the numerator as well, and right now I only have the 20 here. But can we write the 20 as the square root of something? Yes, we just have to square this number. 20 times 20 equals 400, so instead of just the 20, I can write it as the square root of 400, because the square root of 400 equals 20. And then I have a square root here, and I still have the square root of 8 in my denominator. And now I can do the same here, what we did here. I can write this as one big square root and write the fraction inside. I have my 400 over 8. And in my second square root, I have 96 over 8. I can calculate these things. So 96 over 8 equals 12 which is great if we compare it. And 400 over 8, please let it be 50. Uh, but yeah, it is. So if we calculate it, we get 50 here and we found our expression. If you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps me a lot. I wish you a wonderful day and I hope to see you in one of my next videos. Take care.